Joining us now from Washington, the Trump 2020 campaign senior advisor, Katrina Pearson. Katrina, good to see you this morning. Good morning. So, you know, you look at President Trump out there, he seems happy, he seems, you know, on it, uh, because he's been winning a lot lately, not to mention the economic strength that we're seeing, but all of these judges, uh, this new Supreme Court uh, opportunity, and of course, coming off of, a, uh, of, of an election yesterday, Tuesday, where he also came out uh, victorious. Does protecting the GOP majority this November take on a whole new level of significance after Kennedy's retirement? Oh, absolutely, Maria. You know, one of the reasons that many of us uh, strongly support the president um, is because of this vision that he has for America, this fight that he has for the people. Uh, and he's been winning. Success begets success. And this is something the president is all too familiar with. Um, and now that we have an opportunity to appoint another Supreme Court justice, absolutely transformative for generations to come. I think this is going to energize the base even more to get out and protect the majorities in the House and hopefully add to the Senate, uh, simply because all of the values that we as a party hold dear lie in the balance of this appointment. Yeah, Lee Carter, you can see the president is happy and he is playing on these successes that he's had. You know, no, when he's out there, he's just, he comes alive. He absolutely rallies. comes alive. The president, um, I thought it was really interesting, given the fact that there's been so much controversy over the immigration issue, he really doubled down on that last night. He was uh, completely appealing to his base, and you could see the energy in the room. People were responding to it, despite the fact that he's lost four points in his approval rating just in the last week alone on average. You know, he doesn't seem to be swayed by that at all. And so, Katrina, I, I wonder, you know, I was wondering if he was going to be leaning into the immigration conversation more, if he was going to be focusing on economic successes. How do you respond to what he did last night? Look. Donald Trump, at his core, uh, believes in success of the country, and he understands the importance of securing the border and stopping illegal immigration. People were camped out overnight to get into this rally, and as you saw last night, it was packed, and it's this way everywhere he goes. And I'm still unsure why we're even still debating this particular topic, considering how this was the number one issue during the presidential campaign, and Americans voted in November 2016 on this issue, and he's simply just following through, uh, bringing back law and order, and, and, and doing things that are putting Americans and their families first. So I don't expect him at all to, to come away from, from this particular topic any softer. I agree with you. Immigration was really important, but it was more about protecting our borders than it was, as he said last night, um, our ICE goes in there and they grab them by the neck, they throw them in the paddy wagon, get them the hell out of our country. That kind of rhetoric I, th rhetoric, I think, is really inflammatory to a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there who would say this is too much. That's not necessarily what we wanted. We wanted things to get straightened up. But that is really, don't you, do you think that's going a little bit too far? Well, I would say go back to the 2016 campaign cycle, and you would see a lot of uh, a lot of speaking like that. Um, he also talks about the crime and the criminals and the trafficking and the drug that comes across the borders, and those people do need to be yanked out of our country. And those are the types of things that he's been addressing since day one. Yeah, so I Katrina, don't expect him to look, soften I, that language. I understand what you're saying. I mean, it, it definitely was the campaign promise. But I mean, when you look at the rollout here. Should the administration have done a better job in terms of uh, a preparation, having the facilities ready for the zero tolerance policy? Well, I'm not so sure it's the administration preparation. I mean, these are the current laws on the books. They're just being enforced now. Um, and many people would, would say that if you have thousands of people coming across your border, uh, particularly not at ports of entry, what else are you supposed to do? You have to put them somewhere. Uh, the conditions aren't as bad as they were being reported. A lot of the pictures were coming out uh, from the Obama administration, and the little girl that was crying wasn't even crying because she was separated from her parents. Her mother was actually there on a job interview. Yeah, fair so point. we also have to deal with the propaganda in the media that just makes the administration look bad. Katrina, Mitch Rochelle, real, real quickly, you referenced the base and people camped out uh, for the rallies. Beyond his base, what is the president going to do to get those sort of on the bubble voters that are going to be important, not only in the midterms, but for, uh, inevitably for his reelection? Well, I, I honestly don't think things have changed since 2016. And if you look at the latest Rasmussen poll, it shows that most Americans, you know, aren't holding the president accountable for the separation of those families. In fact, 
56 percent of independents agree with the president on this issue, and they want to hold their own parents accountable for what's happening on the border. So I think as long as he continues to keep his promises to America, he's going to continue to, to be a, a great leader and very successful at it and maintain that support. Um, you're going to have these times when we're going to have these, these issues in the media that we have to fight back against. But at the, in the end of the day, the president is doing what's right for America, and that translates into, into the people. All right. We, we, will, uh, we will leave it there. The, the Rasmussen poll says a little different, though, you said earlier. Well, Rasmussen Lee poll, it, it, it's not necessarily about blame, right? That's about... Uh, it's not necessarily that they don't blame the president. It's that they also blame the parents. Mm, they do. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's an accountability issue, and most Americans agree um, that it's not the president's. Uh, it's not the president's fault. He's not being held accountable for that. I'll just, I'll just add one thing, though. One thing the media can't spin, and that's what the stock market's doing. And it's been <laughs> weak lately. It's very concerned about the rhetoric on trade and tariffs, and you have to worry come October about those premium increases uh, on health insurance. That's something that helps. Trump win in 2016, and the Republicans have not fixed Obamacare. No, no. no I've just he said that. last night, Obamacare is almost dead. He said at the rally last night. Okay, where's the replacement? Yeah. They're yeah, working on it. I mean, they have the the um, the plan they rolled out for community health plans, yeah. at, um, where businesses can band together. But again, that's something that will take months, if not years, to implement. Well, you got the big thumbs down. Remember that one? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, listen, they tried. <laughs> they they tried. The Republicans tried to come up with a repeal and replacement yeah. for Obamacare. But again, tw there are going to be double digit increases on premiums for people in many states, and you're going to see their insurers disappear. Yeah. So they need to get that fixed and that's ASAP. Not, and that's not funny. Katrina, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, we will see you soon, Katrina. Katrina Pearson there.